Welcome back guys. So we're gonna get to the final portion of our show for today. And this is our section that we call the final thoughts. And actually today, this is kind of a fun one because you and I both see things that, you know, at the gym that we're looking at and we're always watching people. We have that chiropractic disease where we're looking and uh, we always kind of just wonder, you know, as we see somebody walk through, like, what are they about to do? You know, they kind of look like they're someone that may be a little risque when it comes to moves. But, um, you know, talking about using momentum during lifts and how that can, you know, increase stress on joints and kind of lead to increase in negative inflammation on the unwanted structures of the body. So of course, when we're weight training, we want to increase inflammation in the muscles so that they learn how to adapt. Um, but when we start seeing people do things that, you know, are, are sloppy for lack of a better term, you know, that really can put you in a situation where, you know, you're, you're heightening yourself at increasing risk for injury and early wear and tear on some of the things that we talked about in episode one, like, like your spines, the different joints of the shoulders, hips, knees, ankles. So Craig, if you want to kind of go from there, but that's, something that we hold, you know, near and dear to our heart is, is using proper form, you know, in your sports specific training or casually at the gym. And, and you nailed it in the, on the head there with sports specific training. And I think that it does come down to realistically, what is your goal? If you are not a competitive athlete, so if you're not a football player, sometimes that speed of your movement is far less important. I know for me, I'm 41 years old. I go to the gym. I really don't. I don't play rugby anymore. I don't. I don't power lift anymore. I still may get on stage in the bodybuilding world again, but realistically, I want to look good. I want to look good. I want to function well. Okay. So nothing that I'm going to be doing is going to require me unless I'm chasing my dog outside. I don't have to go sprint. I don't have to do things fast. I don't have to do a lot of, you know, shoving things. So I don't need that speed. Okay. And I think that that's the case in most people in the gym. Not all, again, but most of the people in the gym, they're looking to look good and feel good. So in a case where you're using these high momentum movements, it can create that inflammation in the joints. Like you said, inflammation in the muscle cell is something that's necessary that happens after a hard workout. It's going to break down the muscle a little bit. And part of the repair process requires an inflammation that increases satellite cell activity and uh, muscle protein synthesis, so we need that. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to totally get rid of that. But let's say, and this was the case yesterday in the gym, I saw somebody doing shrugs, and they were using a shrug machine, and they were using a little bit of too heavy of a weight, and they were going so fast, and they were also rolling the shoulder. So they were going fast, rolling through the shoulder, and I'm just picturing in my mind the labrum, the structure inside of the shoulder does not lend itself to staying healthy in a situation like that. You are taking a bone that is held together to another bone with mostly capsular ligaments and muscle, and you're rolling it around this little piece of cartilage. And as we age, that, that round part of the, the, socket, the ball and socket of the socket joint, uh, it gets little spurs on it. So that can rip, especially with that type of motion, it can rip that labrum right up so you lose that cartilage you have a tear i actually have a labral tear in my shoulder and it's from adjusting people not doing too fast of shrugs but um it, it's bad you know and people don't think about that they think well how much weight can i move how fast can i move it and if, if i'm doing it really intense and i feel like i'm getting this this workout i must be doing something right when well, reality you're just tearing yourself down and i can also go to the point that if i stuck a needle in there and measured muscle activity you're getting far less muscle activation in the targeted muscle by using these fast momentum-based movements. So that's in the gym, in the weights, but you see it with cardio in, in, say, a CrossFit. Oh yeah, so in the CrossFit you know, boxes and a couple of the places that I train, let's go to the rower, for example, you know, whether it's Concept 2 or a water rower. For those of you who are in the form Nazis you know, of us, we, we look around the gym and we're like, all right, let's see how, you know, is it, the, the synchrony of, let's say, a rowing movement is legs, core, pull. And then on the other way out, it's arms, core, legs. You want to make sure that you're keeping that midline stability. And I'll be honest, I look around the room, and, and a lot of times you're seeing people so far forward at the very bottom of that, that push-out position when they're coming out of the hole of the, of the row, and they're putting their neck and their upper back in such flexion and then aggressively whipping back and it's not under control. So it's not like someone who's an advanced mover where they can huge leg pull, 
keeping the core midline and then finish with the arms at the, you know, just below the nipple line and then returning back over and over again. Unfortunately, a lot of these workouts, it's how quick can you move it? And when you start to do things like that, form goes out the window. So I, I see a lot of people hurting their backs and necks and uh, having like shoulder blade pain and rib misalignments from these jerkier movements like the rowers. And but when you learn how to do it correctly, you know, it's an efficient move that should kind of look beautiful, to be honest with you, not look like you're, you know, struggling to even it's like a whip gain a breath. Yeah, it really can be. And the other thing too is it's important to check on, you know, foot foot uh, pad placement as well. Because on for those of you who rode before, you know, if you have the the where you put your feet into it too high or too low, that increases the demand on ankle mobility, which a lot of us don't have. And and so you don't want to see increased shearing of the knees, the hips, and the rounding of the back. So a lot of it could be too. Ask your coach, have them show you where to set stuff up, and then you can record yourself doing some of these movements to see what do I look like when I'm doing it? Because you're gonna be your hardest critic and your uh, best judge of performance, and sometimes you can see, all right, this is actually getting better or where you need to improve. Yeah, and you know, um, first off, I'm impressed that you worked the word nipple into mm. that conversation. Yeah, so you're welcome. Congrats on that. Thank you. Uh, but you know, I've, I've had my patients video their their form and, and send it to me and you know maybe at some point we'll do that down the line for our listeners for our audience allow them to send us your your biggest concern lift send us what you're having trouble with what's causing you pain and maybe Jim and I can uh, can critique it a little bit and maybe break it down analyze it so that'd be fun yeah for sure so I think that's about it for this week anything else that you've got on your mind Preston? no um, got some fun guests lined up for the next couple of weeks too yeah. so stay tuned for those yeah they're just like pouring in now so I, I, I can't wait so uh, you guys all have a wonderful week we look forward to talking again follow us on optimalfunction.com and all of our social media take care see you guys